Welcome back to the American Athletic Conference Media Days as we begin our team section where we first will have SMU take the stage along with Coach Sonny Dykes and players coming up as well. But it's been a fantastic couple years for Sonny Dykes up on the Hilltop, 17-6 and six in his two years there. So we uh, bring up kind of some information about the Mustangs. We need they've had some talent, especially offensively. Yeah, and I think the big question Sonny Dykes is going to get, and you see it right at the bottom, Tanner Mordecai, quarterback who transferred in from, from Oklahoma, and then, of course, Preston Stone, who's not on there. He's going to be a true freshman. He was a very highly rated high school player. So I think that's going to be the big question. Who did what mm -hmm. um, or who's going to do what in the fall, and who does he think might win that job? Yeah, Shane Bouchelle has left SMU. Uh, now let's bring in Coach Sonny Dykes. Coach, thanks so much for joining us. I feel like at this point, Last year, Coach, there were so many restrictions and protocols, and you guys were so good with it. But this year, how much more has that team chemistry built having a spring, being able to do meetings with the teams this year? Well, thanks for having me, first of all. Just uh, glad to be here and excited to be part of Media Day. Looking forward to a great season. Um, you know, it's, it's, a, it, it's a whole lot different than it was. I mean, I, I think the thing that, that, you know, we understand is that it's changing pretty much every single day, obviously. You know, we're talking to our medical professionals and getting their advice on the, the things that we're doing. But, you know, our players have done an unbelievable job. Our guys came back in late January and began working out. And we didn't start spring ball until really late. We had a, a great 12-week uh, block, basically, of training uh, before we started spring football and then had spring football really up to the last day of class. And then our guys came back in, in June and have had an outstanding summer. So I feel like you know, as a football team, we're in, a, in the best place we've been, um, certainly since I've been here at SMU and excited about this season. I think we have done a, a really good job of improving our roster from top to bottom. You know, I think that you're only as good as the bottom third of your roster, and we feel like ours is, is much improved. Uh, we've got more players and young players that are going to contribute. Uh, there'll be more competition for spots. We'll have guys that have been two and three year starters. They're going to have to work hard to hold on to their job. and. As you said earlier, we have a great chemistry on this team, and, and that's so important. Every football team has a different mentality and a different attitude, and, and this team has a great, uh, a great work ethic. I think they're very determined. I think they're playing uh, with a lot of confidence. You know, I think we, we start practice with a lot of confidence and, and have had an outstanding offseason. So we're excited about, about our opportunities this year and looking forward to getting started. Well, thank you, Coach. We will now open it up to the media members to ask questions. And just as we did with Commissioner Oresco, Chuck Sullivan will call on each media member to ask their questions. Thanks, Chris. We'll get started with uh, Joseph Hoyt from the Dallas Morning News, please. Hey, Sonny. Um, you know, obviously you talked about competition at key positions. Obviously, quarterback is there. I'm kind of curious, what are you kind of looking for from each of the guys? And what's kind of the plan going into uh, fall camp for how you want to split up reps and at least initially? Yeah, you know, we're very fortunate in that uh, really we have three quarterbacks that are competing for a job. Um, you know, I think all three of them are, are unique and have a different skill set. All three of them were on campus this spring and had a chance to, to begin to really get comfortable with our offense. You know, Tanner joins us, uh, uh, you know, from Oklahoma. Uh, he's, you know, he's a guy that's played in big football games. Um, you know, he's somebody that we're really excited about and think he has a lot of potential. Uh, so it should be a, a great battle. You know, Preston graduated early, went through spring ball. Uh, you know, Derek Green's been here and has uh, really improved every single year. So we really like our quarterback room. We, we like the competition. You know, the funny thing about, about that job is, you know, sometimes as coaches, we, wanna, we want that battle to be decided by a certain day or this practice or that practice. And, you know, what we've tried to do in the past is just let it occur naturally. You know, bring the guys in. Uh, put, a, put the ball in their hands, let them go out and compete every day, see which quarterback consistently moves the team the best, makes the fewest mistakes, and, and gives us the best chance to win. And really, that's the, the criteria that we have. And, you know, as I said, fortunately, all three of them are here in the spring. They all had outstanding springs. You know, I, felt, I feel like we have an opportunity to win with any of the three. And we'll see how it plays out this summer, you know, and, and as we start fall camp. The funny thing about that is typically – you know, one guy always makes a big jump over the summer, and it'll be interesting to see which one of the three does. And do you kind of have a plan as of right now for, you know, how many, like, who's going to go with the ones? Are they all going to get reps with the ones, or is it still just? Yeah, yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll kind of rotate it through uh, with all three of them and give them an opportunity to, to work with one, twos, and threes. You know, 
the way we practice, we rotate receivers, and it's not really uh, as clear cut maybe as you think with ones, twos, and threes. And but all three of them will get opportunities to to see how they perform. You know, we'll do a lot of um, a lot of team situations uh, this this fall camp uh, because we realize how important that is. Uh, you know, for our success, being able to to execute in critical situations. So all those guys will get a look and. And uh, then we'll try to evaluate it and make a decision as quickly as we can and when it becomes obvious to everybody. Morning, Sonny. Um, was wondering, you hired Jim Levitt in the off season after getting to spend some time with him. Uh, what is the change that he's bringing that you're most excited about? You know, Billy, I'm, I'm excited just about his track record of success. Um, you know, when, when you look at Jim, I've tried to hire him several different times in the past and it hasn't worked and, and fortunate for us it worked this time. You know, you just look at him and where he's been and the success that he's brought to each one of those programs. I mean, he's a guy that, you know, when you look at his track record, it's they get a lot better in year one, even improve in year three and typically are competing for championships pretty quickly. Um, and so we feel like if we can continue to improve on defense, you know, our, our talent's much better than it has been. Our roster's much deeper than it has been. Uh, and so I think we've got some pieces that, that Jim can utilize. And, you know, I think he's going to find the best 11 guys, get them on the field, find things that they can do to be successful. Uh, but the, the thing that I think is so unique about Jim is just his, his passion that he coaches with. You know, he's, uh, he's 63 years old. You think he's 33? Just with it, the way he comes to work every day, he's excited to be here. I think he realizes what a special place SMU is and what a great opportunity this is. And, and so he loves working with our players. It's something we talk about all the time is just how eager our defensive players have been to learn and to embrace the system. You know, they're excited about the, the improvement that they saw in the spring. And we think we'll take the next step this fall. So, you know, he's, uh, he's a very unique guy in some of the things that he does and his approach uh, to football. And, think we're very aligned in the way that we see the game and, and things that we want to do. And so I'm excited about him. I think he's going to make a big difference in our defense. I think uh, the biggest thing that we're going to have to do defensively is just, you know, run to the football, get 11 guys to run to the ball and play as hard and as physical as we can. And if we'll do that, we'll, we'll make great strides with our defense. We'll go to the next one from Chris Vanini from The Athletic, please. Yeah, Sonny, uh, just kind of as a coach, what do you make of the conference realignment talk? I know it doesn't impact you guys this year, but but just what it means for the league. Yeah, I mean, I think it's interesting. I, you know, it's been fun to kind of to, to hear all the, the different conversations and the speculation about everything. You know, uh, coming out of media days, um, especially in this part of the, the country, you know, the big question on everybody's mind really is, you know, is horns down going to be a penalty? You know, that's always the big question uh, around around the part this part of Texas, uh, and certainly in it dominated media days uh, at other places. But you know, I, I think look, I think it's it's a uh, it's going to be a a process. You know, going through this thing and seeing what's going to happen. You know, I feel really good about our place and where we are. I love this conference. I think that you know, as Mike talked about earlier, if it really comes down to to teams that are that are competitive and teams that have opportunities to win championships, then this league will be part of, of, of the conversation on a national, on a national level. Uh, because, I mean, I think everybody is starting to take this league more and more seriously every year. You know, we understand uh, how competitive it is every single week. Uh, we see the success that our teams have when they play against uh, teams in, in the Power Five. And, and you know, the, the, success is, the success is going to do nothing but continue and get, and get better. Um, and so, you know, as we play better schedules, I think you look around the league, our teams are playing more challenging schedules. They're playing better teams, uh, which certainly gives us opportunities to go out there and prove, you know, how worthy the league is. And, and um, you know, it's, it's incredibly competitive. I felt like Cincinnati's team last year that won our conference championship was a top 10 football team. I don't, there was no doubt in my mind just the way that team is built, uh, the, the, the kind of players that they have, uh, the way that they're coached. and. And the level that those guys play at, there's no doubt in my mind, it's a top 10 uh, football program. And you look at other programs in our league and the success they've had through the years and how competitive they've been. And, and again, winning big football games against, 
against teams that are highly regarded has been something that we've done pretty consistently. So, you know, for us, we have to continue to take the next step as a program. You know, we are, we're a team that's gotten better. Uh, we've played really well at times, and we've played not very well at other times. I think you look at the way we ended the season last year, and, and it certainly wasn't indicative of what we want to do as a program. You know, did not play well uh, the last three quarters of the season, and um, you know, uh, it was just it was disappointing for us. We got off to a pretty good start and and had some success early on, but we've got to do, do a better job of being able to close out seasons. And our guys understand how important the the month of November is if we want to win a championship. And so, you know, we're going to build our team to to have that kind of success and to, to compete for a conference championship. And as someone who grew up in the Southwest Conference, uh, how important is regionalization and familiarity with, with teams you think within a conference? Well, I mean, I, I think it's important. I mean, I look at, look at our schedule. I mean, we play, we play North Texas every year. We play TCU every year. We're going to play, you know, people that make sense to us from a regional perspective. We're playing Louisiana Tech. We're playing Abilene Christian. So those are four non-conference teams that, that we're going to play that are, you know, that are close to us regionally. Um, but at the end of the day, you know, we want to play against the best competition we can play against. And if, if that means, you know, playing uh, against Central Florida, playing against a team in Florida that's had tremendous success, or Cincinnati, or Memphis, or, or Houston, or, you know, teams that have had success in this league, then, you know, we're, we're ready to play them. It doesn't really matter to us where they are. And um, as I said, I think this league is incredibly strong. Um, you know, I think it's uh, year in, year out. It's, it's proven to be one of the top leagues in the country. And, and um uh, you know, we're going to do nothing but get better and better as we have opportunities to play on bigger stages. We'll take the next one from Steve Lansdale with Southwest Sports Media Group, please. Uh, good morning, Sonny. You talked about the improved talent and depth that you've had on your team now. Um, and when you look at that and when you've digested all the film from spring practice, what are your biggest question marks about this team as you enter camp? Well, I mean, it always comes down to, to having a quarterback that has experience. And so f from that perspective, you know, that's going to be the biggest question that we have to answer. Uh, we've got to get some things sorted out with our kicking game. You know, we think we have outstanding um, options, uh, but we, we have, you know, players that are very talented, but they just haven't performed at this level quite yet for us. Um, and so, you know, that's always the biggest answer. Uh, our question that you have that needs to get answered as quickly as it can. You know, I think we have to continue to, to develop depth up front defensively. You know, we like the addition of some new players. We love the, the freshman class that we have coming in. You know, we're bigger and stronger than we have been in the past. Um, you know, our football team has, has really matured up front on both uh, lines of scrimmage, which is going to be important for us if we want to win a championship. I think everybody in, in football understands, you know, the game is still played and won up front. Um, and we've got to continue to get better. Uh, I think we've, again, changed our, our roster when it comes to our defensive front and just the size and strength of those guys. And, and, uh, and now we just got to get them to play really hard and complete, compete at a high level and play physical. And so, you know, I think that, that that's, that's, those are the things that we have to answer. You know, we have a really good skill group coming back. I'm excited about uh, what we have, you know, uh, coming back as a wide receiver, excited about what we have at running back and think we have certainly the most talented defensive backfield we've had, uh, again, since I've been here. There'll be competition for every one of those spots on the back end, um, and there'll be some really good athletes competing and playing at a high level. So, you know, we've got to answer those questions, and then a big thing for us is, if we, again, if we want to be a championship football program, we have to improve defensively, and I think it's pretty clear to everybody. We'll take the next one from Matt Baker with the Tampa Bay Times, please. Hey, Sonny, uh, with Texas and Oklahoma going to the SEC, what impact, if any? Sorry, uh, Texas, Texas, no, you to the SEC. What impact, if any, do you expect that to make on recruiting in the state of Texas? You know, that's a good question. I, I don't think it, it's hard to it's hard to, to say at this stage, you know, obviously we have a lot of momentum in recruiting right now in our program, um, you know, the Dallas Fort Worth area is very, very important to us uh, when it comes to recruiting. You know, I think that you have to recruit your home if you're gonna be successful as a football program. And, and we're fortunate to be in Dallas-Fort Worth, you know, where I think the best high school football in the country's played. Um, I think they're the best coaches. I think there's the most um, dedication and investment in the programs. Um, the, the players 
you know, graduate ready to go play at a high level in college football and have a chance to compete very early on. And so we're in a great situation from that standpoint. You know, I don't know how that's going to, this move is going to change all that. I think, you know, I, I think it'll be interesting to see what happens with the Big 12 and where they end up uh, in, a, in a couple of years and what ends up happening with all that. And, and you know, until then, it's just a lot of speculation. And I don't think anybody really knows. Um, but as I said earlier, you know, we've got to worry about ourselves. We have to do a good job recruiting uh, guys that are difference makers in our, for our program, and we think we're doing that right now. Thanks so much, Sonny, for taking the time. Coach, we'll see you uh, at the start of the season less than 24 days away. Okay, look forward to it. Thanks. Yep. So, Rini, what interesting did you hear uh, from Coach Dykes? Is they, you know, still a question at quarterback, but your thoughts about the way they're going to go about the battle? Yeah, no, I think that's the correct way. You got to get them all reps, and you got to get them all reps with the ones. But the biggest thing I took away from that is the hiring of Jim Levitt, the defensive coordinator. So for those that don't know or don't remember Jim Levitt, back in the early days at a conference, he was the head coach at South Florida. They raised all the way up to number two in the national rankings. He's a good coach. He's a hard-nosed, old-school defensive coordinator, exactly what SMU needs, and I think that is it's going to be great for that defensive unit. It's interesting when you look at the talent that comes into Dallas because – in talking with Coach Dykes in the past, they relied so heavily on the transfer portal. Sure. The kids that would leave, like a Shane Bouchelle, that would leave Texas wanting to have more playing time. And the bigger their brand has grown, you see them wear Dallas across their jerseys now. Now they get guys like Preston Stone. They don't just have to rely on the transfer portal. How much have you seen that program yeah, grow? No, it's grown a lot. And so, yeah, you're right. You're keeping kids home. We know how much talent is in this state and, and really in the Dallas-Fort Worth area. So, yeah, they are keeping kids home now. And as you said, the Preston Stone recruitment is, you know, shows you that right there. But, again, in the transfer portal, it seems like when kids do want to kind of get away – if it doesn't work out, they always come back home. So SMU is in a great position. Yeah, the, the recruiting Texas was interesting about how that will affect them. I will say, like, their conference schedule is tough when you think of who they have to play on the road. They have to go to Memphis, to Cincinnati, to Navy, to Houston. Obviously, Cincinnati up there at the top. We saw the preseason poll. Who, where does SMU, in your opinion, align between the rest of that kind of crowded group at the upper echelon? Yeah, no, I, I think they're up towards the top. So um, we talked about and we saw the preseason poll, Cincinnati, UCF. I think everyone has them one and two. But I think SMU is right there. I think the question is quarterback, right? And yeah. he, he talked about the lack of experience. So whoever wins that battle, I think the offense will, will go as that quarterback goes. But he, whoever wins that job is going to be surrounded by a ton of talent. They are. I mean, when you talk about Ulysses Bentley, things that we haven't talked about, TJ McDaniel Robertson coming back coming as back. well. Robertson, speaking of, he's going to join us right now. We have some of the student athletes from SMU joining us, Reggie Robertson and Delano Robinson joining us now from SMU. And we'll go right to questions for the student athletes, please. We'll start with Billy Embody with 24-7 Sports, please. Hey guys, uh, good to talk to you and uh, thanks for doing this. Reggie, uh, I know you worked out a little bit on the side in the spring, but didn't do much. Can you t walk us through what the rehab process has been like and how do you feel going into fall camp? Uh, just a rehab process. It was just an everyday type of thing. Went in uh, to the training room every day, just stayed in there for hours and just worked on some PT, just trying to get my leg back, my quad back, my hamstring, just everything around that and then going out there ran with the team and worked out on the side and the rehab has been great and i uh, going into fall camp I feel amazing I feel better than I have through the whole time I've been here at SMU and I just can't wait. And a follow-up uh, for Delano um, what have you seen from Jim Levitt and and just uh, the changes that he's made so far uh, defensively for you guys? Yeah, I've seen tremendous changes since the moment he stepped in. Um, his passion for the game is, is unreal. He comes to work every day. You know, even when we're there early in the morning, he's right there with us, you know, encouraging us, you know, coming out there with so much energy. Um, I think he's he's bringing the pieces together with our defense. He's just putting everybody together in the right spots, and we're going to make a good run for it. We'll go to the next one from Dan Tortora with Wake Up Call DT, please. This question is for both of you. Just what you can say about where you feel this team is heading into the season coming off of the COVID year and the success that you've been able to have under Sonny Dykes. Where do you feel the team is moving forward at this point? Um, I think we're moving 
forward in a great direction. Um, we're all competitive, more competitive than we've ever been. Um, the bond that we've had with our team overall is better. Everybody's clicking, everybody's coming together on the same page. Um, we know we all have a common goal, you know, we're gonna reach that goal. And in order for us to reach that, reach that goal, we gotta be on the same page. And that's something that we've harped on this whole offseason. Yeah, just to piggyback off of what Delano said, I feel like this is going to be a great year for us, you know, coming off that COVID and being able to hang out with the team, be around the team more and just bond and do stuff together and just get that team chemistry down is great. And just going out there and practice and doing seven on seven right now, just stuff like that. I can see just the competitive nature this team has. And we all have that one goal, like Delano said, and we're going to go reach that goal no matter who's in our way. So, sir. And a quick a quick follow up to that name, image and likeness, just how you gentlemen are are handling that and the information that's maybe been given to you at this point. Uh, for me, with the name, image and likeness, you know, you can't go out there and just sign every deal. I appreciate like everybody reaching out to me and just giving me the opportunity to, you know, make money off my name, image and likeness. But, you know, you just got to sit down, find the right deal for you and just make sure that uh, everything's in line to uh, make some good money off your name, so. Yeah, and just to piggyback off what he's saying, I think it's a great opportunity just for athletes just to, you know, make money off their name. But I think, uh, like Reggie was saying, you gotta be smart with what you do. Um, reading the contracts, you know, reading it, going through our compliance team, you know, just making sure everything fits right. Hey, uh, Reggie, this is Joseph Hoy from the Dallas Morning News. Um, you know, obviously the big question with you guys um, from a team perspective is the quarterback battle heading into camp. Uh, I'm just kind of curious what you saw, um, you know, from, you know, kind of the, the, the three guys in fall camp and what you're kind of uh, expecting, you know, from that QB room. Uh, from the QB room, I expect a lot. We got uh, three great, great QBs back there. We got Tanner, Preston, and uh, Derek. I mean, any one of those guys can – go out there and start for me i feel like no matter who it is they're both they're all competitive they all want to play they all know the playbook and just excited to see who's going to be the starter for us and just where that qb room goes mm -hmm. one thing that garrett riley kind of talked about before is just the how impressive preston stone has been from kind of doesn't really act his age you know he seems a little bit older is that kind of something that you guys have seen from him too yeah for sure like once he stepped foot on campus you know he didn't seem like a freshman, he seemed like kind of like an older guy, just the way he carried himself. And when he's out there on the field as a QB, you know, some freshmen, they're kind of timid and stuff like that. But he went out there and took control of the offense and, you know, was telling people where to go and just speaking up and being uh, in that leader type of standpoint, you know. So I'm just really excited to see where, where he's going to go and things that he's going to do. Okay, next we'll go to Steve Lansdale with Southwest Sports Media Group, please. Yeah, Reggie, uh, sort of a two-parter for you. Do you anticipate wearing a brace on your leg this year? And then to piggyback off of the question about the quarterbacks, from your standpoint as a receiver, is there a difference in the way the ball comes out of their hand or the way they call plays at the line of scrimmage? How much does it impact what you try to do? Uh, I'll answer the, the second question first. Uh, me personally, it doesn't matter. As long as the ball in the air, I have a job to go get it and make the QB make the play and make him look good. So as long as it's in the air and they give me some, some room to catch the ball, then that's what I'm going to do because that's what they brought me in to do. And then with the brace, I guess you guys are just going to have to wait and see. Fair enough. And then for Delano, um, there's been reports out about the transfer coming in from Oregon. Isaac, who played for Coach Levitt, how much – have you been able to get with him and how valuable is that to have with a new coach to have someone who's already played for him and sort of share with you and your teammates what expectations coach Levitt will have uh, yeah I think it's a great addition to our team you know creating competition for us making everybody work harder and then just overall making our defense better um, like I said before just coach Levitt bringing the pieces together you know just filling in spots that we need to make our defense the way that he needs it to be um, I've talked to Coach about it. You know, it's going to be a great competition and it's going to be a great addition. And uh, I'm looking forward to getting him here and helping out the defense. Let's we'll take the next one from Justin Williams from The Athletic, please. Uh, hey, Reggie. Just uh, I know the CFP expansion and 12-team playoff 
won't necessarily apply to you, um, but I'm curious your thoughts on, on what something like that could mean for a school like SMU and, and a conference like the AAC. Uh, I feel like it will apply to us. We go out there, we win the games we need to win. I feel like if they expand it, then we'll be in there. So.